Hey Fisters and welcome to this video where I want to show you real quick how to convert a dictionary to a list and what is the Python way, most Pythonic way of uh, accomplishing this. Okay, so given a dictionary with some keys like Alice, Bob and Carl and some values, for example ages, age value, integer value or something, uh, 19, 23, 47, you want to obtain a list of tuples, so like this, Alice 19, Bob 23, Carl 47, where the first tuple value is the key and the second tuple value is the value. So how do you accomplish this, accomplishing this in, in Python? Okay, so say you have a dictionary of um, key value pairs, exactly the same dictionary we have just looked at, and now you want to convert this to a list of tuples. So, so I'll directly write a print statement. You can use the list constructor on the dictionary items method. That's it, okay, so the dictionary items method returns an iterable of uh, key value pairs and now you convert it to a list so that you have, the, like you inst instantiate the iterable in memory, so to say, by creating it in, in a list. Otherwise it, you, you, otherwise it would just create an iterable and then it would dynamically create the key value pairs if you iterate for over it, for example. Yeah? So, but it's not yet instantiated in memory. So therefore you should use the list constructor and then you can um, uh, print the result. And now you see the result is a list of key value pairs and the key value pairs are encoded are uh, stored in the tuple data structure. So this is the most Pythonic way of, of accomplishing this. But um, in some cases, for example, you don't want to have the uh, key value pairs. Maybe you want to have only the keys. In this case, you can use the function keys. And yeah, now you get only the keys, not the values. So now you have a list of keys. But what if you want to have a list of values, uh, then you can simply use the dictionary function values. And this returns, a, uh, so the values returns an iterable of values. Now you convert it to a list and you get the values only the values without the keys. Okay, so these are the like most basic uh, methods of converting a dictionary to a list. But uh, so what if you want to uh, want to modify each key value pair in the dictionary? Okay, so you want to have you want to have a new list of key value tuples, but you want to modify each tuple before you store it. What is the most Pythonic way of accomplishing this? In this case, you use list comprehension. List comprehension starts with a square bracket notation, so you create a new list. And then you define an expression and a context. So, so now what is a context? A context uh, is uh, um, all values, basically all key value pairs in the dictionary items uh, method. Okay, so if you call it dictionary items now, you get back an iterable. Okay, so you can iterate over it, obviously. So you can iterate over all key value tuples. So you store the first tuple value in the variable named k and the second um, tuple value in the variable named v. You, the items gives you a, an iterable of tuples, so therefore yeah, you, you have your key and value. Now you can do something with the key and value before you store it in your new list. And for example, you can create a new tuple. The first tuple value being, um, yeah, you use slicing to access only the th first three characters in your, um, of your key. And then you can also have the value minus one, for example, so you can reduce the age also. So let's print this. And now you see, okay, we have um, like reduced each string value, each key value uh, to a string with three characters like Ellie, Bob and Carl. Um, instead of Alice, Bob and Carl. And we can also, we have also reduced the age by one, like we have 18 instead of 19, we have 22 instead of 23 and 46 instead of uh, 47. Okay, so this way you can modify each key value pair and if you need to do this, then this is the most Pythonic way of accomplishing this list comprehension, yeah? But there's also an alternative um, and this alternative is what many coders actually would uh, coming from other programming languages like Java or C++ would actually do. They would first create an empty list then they would use, maybe they know it, the items method, um, then you would they would iterate over all key value pairs in the dictionary items. This is what you have already seen in our um, context part of the list comprehension statement, but now you can of course have an arbitrary complicated loop body. And this is like a big advantage. So you can have the append, append method and you can, can append an element, yeah? Or a tuple, say. Say let's 
let's call it tab. And now, of course, maybe it would cost you many lines to define this tuple here. So you can have a very complicated um, loop body. You can even load some data from files or from other data structures and modify the data, calculate variances or what you like, you can do actually. That's why I also included this method because sometimes if you have a very complicated loop body, you cannot encode ev everything in the expression part of your list comprehension statement. So therefore you need to have a basic loop and you need to iterate over all key value pairs in the items method. So even this like often non-Pythonic way of just using a simple for loop and doing something with the data structure, this can be the best, the most Pythonic way of doing it actually if you have a complicated loop body. Okay, so in our case we don't have and therefore you actually wouldn't use it. Yeah, so because I mean even if you would have this expression here from the list comprehension statement, yeah, you can you should basically use the list comprehension statement. Okay, so let's um, let's print the result of this to see that it's also equivalent. Um, let's run this. Okay, you see both of them are equi equivalent, the um, list comprehension statement and the loop statement. But the loop, loop statement is like more generally um, extendable, so therefore I included it here. Okay, and then it's also a just for fun method. You create, um, you use the list constructor on the result of the zip, zip function. The zip function zips together two iterables, so the ith values of two iterables. Uh, so you can pass like the keys and the values. So now we have two iterables, the keys and the values, and now we zip together these the the ith values of the keys and the values iterables and this also results in the same data structure with, as uh, originally yeah so so this is basically the same this one has, is the same as using the list constructor on the items um, method of the of dictionaries okay so those are equivalent but of course you wouldn't use this, this zip function in this particular case because we have the items function to do exactly this but in general it's good to know about the zip function and how to zip together keys and values and um, different iterables okay so that's it for now thanks for listening to this video um, if you want to improve your python skills and join my free python email academy where i give a lot of free content like cheat sheets even free books i have uh, free python courses and everything and and you will get everything directly into your inbox so it's a, it's a it's a great way of like passively learning over time um day after day after day solving puzzles reading about interesting python topics and so on so join my email list i give a link in the description below and see you in the next video bye